Hello and welcome to Felix's FaceTime. In today's video we have an interview with Eric Berger, the writer of the book Lift Off. If you enjoyed today's video don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Um, thank you so so much for coming on here for an interview. Um, can you tell everyone a bit about yourself? Sure Felix, thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Eric Berger. I'm a journalist at Ars Technica where I write exclusively about space, everything from space policy to new space, so everything NASA is doing, SpaceX is doing everything else. And I also just recently wrote a book called Liftoff, which it tells the story of the uh, early days of SpaceX. Cool. Can you tell me a bit more about your book and how you wrote it and how you found out all the information? Yeah, so after SpaceX landed the Falcon Heavy rocket, it was pretty clear that they were not just a really interesting company, they were changing the space industry and that was going to have a lot of ramifications and there had been a lot of other companies new space companies had come along and tried to do what spacex was doing but they'd all failed so i really wanted to understand why spacex was successful um, so i went back to the beginning and talked to all of the early employees elon of course but all of his vice presidents their key uh, their key lieutenants and, and on down the line um, and it, it turns out that the story of the Falcon 1 rocket, which has kind of been relegated to history because it's small and only flew about five you know, launch attempts, it turns out there's a really great story there. And so that, that became what the book was about. Wow. Okay. Um, how did you find out? Um, sorry. Um, what was it like interviewing Elon Musk for your book? What, was it quite interesting? Did you have some, <laughs> did you change a lot of what he said when you put it into the book or was it kind of word for word? What's it like? Well, you don't change what people say when, when you interview them, you, you tell you tell what they say. Um, but, you know, talking to Elon Musk is always interesting. You always need to be on your toes because he's a very smart guy and he doesn't really suffer fools. So, you know, you want to be asking smart questions. You want to be paying attention to his answers. Um, but he does appreciate reporters who try to get the facts right. Um, and he appreciates reporters who understand you know, what they're talking about. So I think that's one of the reasons why he agreed to talk to me for the book is he knew that, you know, I understood the industry and, and tried to report about it accurately. Okay. Um, in your opinion, if Elon Musk um, stopped being CEO of SpaceX, who do you think would be fit for that job? Who would you well, Yeah, that's a difficult question um, because Elon is central to SpaceX. I mean, the core identity of the company is to move fast, to operate at low cost, and to essentially get humans to Mars. And that, that has been the ethos of the company since the beginning, and that came 100% from Elon. And the fact of the matter is 20 years later, almost, he's still there every day, banging away, trying to think about ways to move forward more faster and more quickly. Um, so, who would take over the company? I don't know. You know, SpaceX is very fortunate to have an excellent president, Gwen Shotwell. Um, and, and she she does a fantastic job running the business side of the company. Um, but, and, and she's also an engineer, but she's not the kind of um, engineer that, that Elon is in terms of really digging into the technical details of, of Starship. So I think maybe in the interim, his brother Kimball might step back and, and, and sort of have broader management of, of SpaceX and, and try to find people to, to step forward and fill the technical, technical part of, of SpaceX. You know, I think their current business using the Falcon 9 rocket and Falcon Heavy rocket would really have no trouble continuing and, and their, their, their contract with Crew Dragon and SpaceX would be successful um, because those businesses are well established. The, the, the visionary part, the Starship part might suffer. Um, so we certainly hope Elon remains healthy and involved with SpaceX for a long time to come. Okay. Um, what was it like writing your book? Did you learn much more or did you kind of really know what was happening and you just wanted to kind of dig in deeper? No, I learned a tremendous amount of things. You know, a lot of the people who worked for SpaceX early on, the, the vice presidents in particular, um, had lots of stories to tell and they'd never really told them before. They'd all thought about writing books about their experiences, but they weren't sure, you know, they didn't want to get on the wrong side of Elon. Um, and so when I came along, they were very happy to all tell their stories really in full for the first time. Um, and, and, and they were sort of happy that I was, you know, that I was coming in and trying to talk to everyone to get the complete story. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I learned a ton. I knew the basics of the Falcon one rocket, right? It launched, it failed three times and everything was riding on that fourth launch, which ultimately was successful, but there's so much value in knowing the details. Okay. Um, what rocket launches have you watched in person and which ones would you like to watch in person? Well, let's see. I've seen most of the big ones. Um, I've seen the space shuttle, the Falcon nine, Falcon heavy, Soyuz, um, Atlas, um, Delta four heavy. Um, uh, the one I'm most looking forward to, I guess, would be super heavy, the Starship vehicle that SpaceX is building just because it's so big. But we're really lucky, Felix, this is an amazing time to be involved in the space industry because there's a ton of new rockets that are going to be coming online within the next few years. You know, the NASA space launch system should launch within the next 12 months. Um, uh, Europe is building the Ariane 6 rocket, which is pretty cool. Um, Japan is going to have an H3 rocket coming along. Of course, ULA has its Vulcan booster that probably will launch within the next 12 months or so. Um, and those are all very exciting big rockets. And there's a ton of small rockets. The, the Fireflies Alpha, ABL Space has a rocket. Relativity has a rocket. So, I mean, it's just this is golden era for people who really like rockets because there's a bunch of new ones coming down and it's all going to happen pretty soon. Cool. Okay. Um, will you ever write another book? And if you do, what will that, what, will, what do you have any plans for that? So I've been thinking about that and, and, and thinking about if, if, if I were to tell the next chapter of this basic story, what would that be? And, and I think the most significant, interesting thing that they've done over the last 10 years. And, and remember, liftoff, for all intents and purposes, ends in 2008. Um, and so the next chapter for you, the most interesting part for me is how they managed to actually land rockets and reuse them. I think that's an incredible story. And so um, still a little bit, still a little bit worn out from liftoff because I wrote that book while doing my day job. But I think that's probably the next part of the story I'd like to explore. Okay, you could call your first book liftoff and your your, um, your second book touchdown. <laughs> um, <laughs> what's your plans for the future? Um, I, I've got to be honest. You know, I switched to covering space full time uh, about six years ago, and it's always something I've been interested in. But but as I've been writing more and more about space, it just, it just becomes more and more engaging as time goes on. As I mentioned earlier, this is really a golden era of space flight because you've got NASA looking to go back to the moon. You've got the contest with China to do that. And then there's this flourishing of commercial space companies. I mean, we saw this incredible, you know, this incredible month where we had Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos after years and years and years, both finally getting to fly in their vehicles. And that has all kinds of implications. Um, and it's just, there's, there's lots of things happening in space more than ever before. And it's just, it's just a real pleasure to be able to, um, to, to watch this industry and see where it goes. Cool. Um, that's all the questions I have for you today. Um, do you have any questions for me at all? Yeah, I think it's fantastic that, that you're so interested in space. And I'm just wondering sort of what was the genesis of that? What really got you, you know, turned on to this? Um, I'm not really sure. Um, so at first it was kind of, um, I saw um, the Falcon Heavy launch popped up in my recommended a few years after it launched on YouTube. Um, and I watched that and it looked brilliant. And, you know, when they come down to land, that was brilliant. So I kind of researched a bit into, more into that. I kind of got interested and then I found out about the inspiration for and mm -hmm. then I just without really knowing what would happen I just emailed them and asked for an interview and that's where it kind of all started off. Well I think it's fantastic what you're doing and I and I would say that that you know the the Falcon Heavy and the rocket landings have been inspirational to a lot of people. I mean I grew up I'm a lot older than you, obviously, but I, I miss I miss the Apollo era, the moon landings in the late 1960s and early 1970s, and I always regretted that until April of 2016 when I saw that first Falcon 9 rocket land on a boat on the drone ship, um, and and that was the first time in my life I was like, well, I'm glad I'm alive now and not during the Apollo era because this looks like it's the future. And, and five years later now, they're doing pretty amazing things. So, so yeah, you picked a good time to get into this. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, thank you so, so much for coming on here for an interview. You had some, um, you had some brilliant um, answers to my questions. 
and your book and your book is absolutely brilliant and it's really really good thank you thank thanks very much felix thank you bye bye thanks for watching if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to like and subscribe bye